Paul Thomas, and welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So, G. Will Green, come on down. You're probably wondering, who the hell is G. Will Green? So, G. Will Green is one of the people who's vying for the top spot at the DNC. Um, that dumps the fire of our organization that's multi-million dollars in debt. So, yeah, so she's applying for that role. And during one of the DNC debates, a question was asked. Essentially, raise your hands for who thinks that one of their donors was out of line attacking Keith Ellison. I mean, he was somewhat of a slur, to be honest. Everybody raised their hand, except for Jimu Green. Now, I did a video on this myself. And so I kind of want to play her entire response just so people can get a fair defense of her actions. Um, in this particular clip that's coming up, she has some serious feelings about something Jenk said. Jenk kind of made this point. She was too scared to, to face up to her donors. That was his, you know, his, his analysis. Um, look, the problem with Jenk's analysis sometimes is that it doesn't... He put thoughts on people. Like, I have no idea what that woman was thinking. And at the end of the day, that woman could have very well thought, this is a gachu, I don't want to play this gachu game. She could have thought that. That might have been an honest answer. But he essentially was like, no, no, she just couldn't stand up with her donors and everything else. So on that point, I think she's right. And she may be perfectly right on. There's no way to know, but I think she could be right. I give her the benefit of the doubt. The second part, she's gone Looney Tune. So, I'm going to play this clip in its entirety. I think it's like two, two and a half minutes. Um, the part that's interesting is when she gets onto the Bernie-Hillary conversation and the Bernie-Hillary divide. So, let's hear it. Make your case. Get that people wanted to have that answer, that question answered, but I was very clear in my response as far as why I was not going to raise my hand, and it was because that was intended to divide us. If there was a question about how much should you know high wealth donors um, have influence in the DNC, that's a question that I would answer. But just the simple kind of gotcha, having worked in media for the last six and a half years, I know the games they play and I wasn't gonna go down that road. Now, so what happens in the coverage of it is that Shank and Anna basically say that I wasn't brave, that I, wasn't someone who was willing to like take on the establishment and when the reality is as a young staffer at the DNC when I was there I was the only person in that building calling on the DNC to look at more grassroots fundraising that was my role to bring in low dollar cont contributions to the DNC I was the only person in that building calling out the lack of support for young people the lack of new voices being allowed into our system and so it is kind of frustrating when someone gets up in front of a camera and just point blank says, you're not brave. I want to have a conversation about that. We've reached out. <laughs> I want to talk about that. Any response. I find that to be a little bit trifling. Well, we're here now. You can respond. I'm, I'm happy to have any conversation. And I think the other thing that was really troublesome was that then there was a very quick pivot to that the essence of this race is the Hillary versus Bernie divide. And if anyone thinks that the essence of this race for DNC leadership is to look back at that situation when the essence of this race is opening up this party, transforming our transparency, making the budget available to not just DNC members, but to the public and to the press. It is about how we look at how to innovate our state parties, embracing experimentation with new strategies. It is about how we turn our party around and mount a massive resistance to Donald Trump. And if you're going to say that the essence of this race is that Hillary-Bernie divide, that is the problem. Because there are too many people who want that to divide us and make it impossible for us to look at who our real enemy is. And our real enemy is a system of bureaucracy that has been put in place at the DNC that makes it impossible for young people to engage, a system, a, a bureaucracy that makes it impossible for actual true connections to happen between progressives and big D and little d Democrats around the country. And that's what we have the opportunity to do here. If, if, Chank, if he wants to look at just the divide as being the soul of this race, 
And I think that's asinine, and he has another thing coming. And I think... Asinine? All right. Jamu, you wanted to talk? Talk to me. So, you full well believe that the Bernie-Hillary divide is not the soul of this race. Now look, you named several things. Budget, uh, transparency, innovation, experimentation. What I didn't hear is policy. And that's where I think you're missing it. So, the question is, is there a stark difference between the policies that Bernie Sanders would have tried to implement versus the policy that Hillary Clinton would try to implement? Now, if you're being honest with yourself, you will say, of course, yes. One person wanted to sell fracking around the world, the other did not want to frack at all because they were aware of the environment and aware of the damage that it does. One person wanted to topple governments like Libya and Hon well, she didn't topple Honduras, but she essentially aided in that coup. Um, the other person literally did not want to attack continents. The other person, complete unyielding allegiance to Israel, regardless of the situation that took place. I remember I was traveling in Israel, and one of the guys, um, I was talking to a Jewish cat on the bus, ne Nepal, actually, and he kind of, I made this point to him, I said, yeah, I'm not, I don't want to give you a blank check in regards to having my military fight your battles. I mean, it was one of those things where she literally made this, you know, and, and this is another point. Bernie Sanders was the first person I've heard in the Democratic Party to bring up the Palestinians. Hillary Clinton was giving undying allegiance to Israel when they were murdering and massacring people. In her mind, Israel can't be wrong. Economically, are you telling me that you don't see a drastic difference in regards to the two people? One person wants to literally break up the banks on day one. The other one essentially wanted to give the banks or give their economic policy over to the banks saying, well, you guys know better than I do. And when I was jumping around the world, um, I had to take the flack for a lot of stuff and let people just kind of get it off their chest. One person is a true believer. The other one makes the shit up. If you're making this case that that's not the divide, then you're grossly mistaken. That is the divide. The divide is about policy. The divide is about what you guys did last year. And that's another thing. It was less than a year ago. What are you talking about? The primaries were less than a year ago. You guys at the DNC, the people who donated money to Bernie, donated millions. And I know Hillary Clinton had her billion dollar donors and all that other stuff, but Bernie Sanders was out raising her month after month after month with small dollar donations. One guy gave him a donation and Bernie said, no, 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 just give me the basic minimum. He didn't want to go beyond the campaign rules. And not just that, he wanted small ticket donations to A, make sure you can say it's possible, and B, making sure the person wasn't corrupt. Can your candidate say that? Of course not. The Podesta email showed everything. Look, just because you're screaming out unity does not mean that people are united. It's not like you have magical powers where you say something and something happens. You're sounding like these Republicans, to be honest. Radical Islamic terrorists! Radical Islamic terrorists! Why isn't Obama saying radical Islamic terrorists? As if saying it makes it happen. Saying unity is the same. Saying it doesn't make it happen. Unity is done with hard work and with come to Jesus moments that honestly evaluate what are the things that we say and what are the things we actually believe and how will we go forward trying to implement the things that we actually say and believe. Not just talking points. That's what you keep missing. You guys are saying this is a branding issue. It's not a branding issue. You've lost. Half of your team. I would make the case you've lost more than half because of independence. What are you talking about? That that's not the main point between the divide. You guys cheated. Do you get that? I mean, is that are you aware of that? The DNC took steps to undermine one of the candidates in their own party. 
before that contest was even finished. Are you serious? So you think that, oh, primaries are over, everybody's kumbaya, everybody get together, let's fight Trump. It doesn't work that way. We are not Democrats. I am not a Democrat. I did not vote for a Democrat. I have no plans on voting for a Democrat anytime soon. That's the honest to God truth. That sounds like the opposite of unity to me. And before you say, well, yeah, it's just you. Do you realize there are groups that sprung up to get you guys out of your seats? There's like three, and the two that I know of, Justice Democrats, and there's another progressive group. How is that unity? That doesn't sound like anything like unity to me. Yeah, yeah, we're united, we're united. But Jamu, I thought, is it true that Justice Democrats and some of the other organizations out there that removed you guys from your seat? Yes. But is that unity? I mean, that doesn't really sound like unity to me. That's because people try to divide us. Bernie Sanders raised millions of dollars. $23 at a time. And he raised that money because the people who were given it to him thought that would be a fair election process. Meaning, you put your corporatists up, we'll put our progressive up and see what happens. At the time, we didn't realize that Deborah Wasserman Schultz had been put there by the Obama administration to help usher Hillary Clinton in. We didn't realize that the money that Hillary Clinton was getting from the states was going beyond campaign finance because she was essentially making deals with the states themselves and funneling money into her campaign. That's probably why you guys are $2 million in debt now. You thought Hillary Clinton was giving you the money. She only gave you 1% of the money. You guys cheated. That's the sober, honest truth. And you didn't just cheat Bernie Sanders. You cheated the people who gave their last bit of scratch to that man's candidacy because they thought he would have a better goddamn world. Until you could honestly, soberly, without this political stuff, talk about what took place in the DNC and what took place last year, then there is no unity. I don't know what you're talking about. Unity. Unity. Divide us. You're already divided. There's no DNC. I mean, uh, yes, there's a physical building of a DNC, but none of these clowns can get elected without progressives. So what are you talking about? I suspect that you guys figured if we say unity enough, people would think we're together. No, it doesn't work that way. If we say unity enough, at least the press would think that we're... It doesn't work that way. Nobody's stupid. Jamo Green, look, please put me in touch with your dealer because you are on some powerful stuff. Um, and until, you, when you come down and you look at the world and you look at reality, not the things that you want to believe, but reality, empirically, certainly you know you're not divided. You're divided. You have to know that. I don't know any progressives that call themselves Democrats. I don't even know, I don't even know progressives who at this point will vote for another Democrat. But yeah, sure. We're divided. Unity! Unity! No, no, shh! Unity! Just be united! We gotta be united! We don't have to be united. We need to have a conversation. And that conversation needs to start off with we're sorry we cheated you all. We're sorry that we did that to progressives in that contest. We know you guys invested your money, your hopes, your ideals into this candidate. We know we did it. And we apologize for lying. We apologize for cheating. That's the conversation you need to have. And until you have that conversation, none of this stuff matters. This is ridiculous. You're just a tool for ridicule at this point. Until you can honestly have that conversation, nothing takes place. What did Whoopi say in color purple? To you do right by me? And look, it's apt description. Progressives had been the battered wives of the Democratic Party. I honestly don't know why it took me so long to come to this realization. Came to it now. And a lot of us did. So, Jamu Green, good luck!
with whatever you're trying to do. Um, I appreciate your grassroots action, but at the end of the day, your grassroots action was purely designed to get people who barely had money to put in the pockets of people with already a lot of money. And then have the Democratic Party turn around and screw those people. So good job. Good job. Good job. 95% of the wealth under Obama went to the top 1%. So when you were giving money from grassroots, when you were getting people to give it hard earned cash to the Democratic Party, did those people know that 95% of the wealth went to the top 1%? Like, I guess, did you explain to them when you were giving them that money that you're not getting anything for this money? I mean, for the most part, Democrats are going to continue with their corporate interests. Did you explain that to them? I don't care if you had the whole grassroots thing. It's grassroots to what end? Yes, you probably brought people into the party. But nothing fundamentally changed in regards to the way you guys were running the country. You're still corporatists. You still catered to Wall Street. If anything, it's fraud that you were trying to take money from these people. Get money from your wealthy donors. Get, go away. We don't, go away, man. Your party is busted. I'm at the point where I don't even think you guys are salvageable anymore. I wasn't necessarily there yet. I'm there now. You can't be honest. You have a hard time facing reality, which makes me have a hard time not just dealing with Democrats in general, but voting for you, supporting. I am not the picture of unity, and yet I am replicated thousands and thousands and thousands of time over. So keep pushing that line. At this point, somebody will believe it. Just not us. Thanks, guys.